So here is the painting we're going to do a tutorial on. This is a 16 by 20 canvas and I got this one at Michael's. It was one of the um, packs, multi-packs, so it's an economy pack or what have you. And it's the, I think it, you can see it's the seven, seven eighths wide. And you will paint around the edges so that um, you don't necessarily have to frame it if you don't wish to. So I will get my fresh palette, uh, not palette, but uh, canvas and we can get started. For this painting, I'm going to use a, a mix of colors or, or brands. This is the Folk Art Multi-Surface, which I'm really liking the way this uh, performs on canvas. Also the traditional Americana <clears throat> acrylic paint and the traditional Folk Art acrylic paint. Now the difference between the Folk Art traditional and multi-surface, which I've noticed, is this one dries matte, this one has more of a satin sheen, and it's a little bit heavier bodied uh, for really good coverage on canvas. But since I will finish it with a varathane or a lacquer or varnish over top, it doesn't matter that I'm going to have the different um, sheens. This one also, Americana, uh, dries matte, but they have a multi-surface uh, brand too that also dries with a satin finish. This is like my brush's best friend because it helps me to get my brushes really, really clean. This is a brush basin and I think it's made by Plaid, but I will have a link to it on the website. This is the Low Cornell White Nylon 2-inch brush. Comes in a package of three, which is three different sizes. There's a three inch, the two inch, and a one inch. This is really good for doing the background, getting it covered really quick, which with acrylic is kind of good because you can't um, mix well as it dries too fast unless you do it fast. But also, I wanted to say before you even start, I mean, I'm going to use do mostly of my painting, mostly most of my painting with a three quarter inch flat brush, and I have three different ones I'll be using. Folk Art, uh, Plaid Folk Art just sent me this one in a package of stuff to do. So I was going to test it out here on this one. Um, the Dubois U Pro by Weber is a very, very good brush. It has a little more springy. It's a little stiffer than my old Ur uh, flat three quarter inch stroke brushes. And also I've been testing out this. It's a an expensive brand from Michaels. It's called Craftsmart. Um, this brush set, it, it's performed fairly well for me. So I'm just, I've only used it on one painting and I'm continuing to see how long it lasts and how well it performs. And I think that's it. A full list of colors of paint I use will be available on the website. And I will get started here one moment. I'm going to start with my yellows for the background here, where it's behind all uh, everything. And I have um, a yellow and a parchment of folk art, uh, the daffodil yellow parchment. And I'm going to get a little bit of white on my palette here. I just use these foam plates. And I want it to be darker here and work lighter towards where the main pattern is. So I'm going to double dip yellow, lots of yellow, the parchment here, and I'll go into white now and then. But I'm just going to slap it on here. Now some, with the multi-surface or the regular um, paints, you don't have to wet the canvas because there's enough moisture in them. Make sure you do your sides. I should lift it, so forgive me if it gets a little out of focus briefly. But I'm doing the edge here, so it's, like I said, forgive it if it gets out of focus there. Okay. Now I had measured on my painting and the, oh, I'm pointing to that, you can't see it, the table, which is what that more, um, would you say, <laughs> that light color, 
I'm trying to think of the word and I can't think of it at the moment. But I'm just slip slapping, crisscrossing my strokes, get a little bit of stuff. Oh, I didn't finish my sentence. Um, down here, the table's like uh, six and a quarter inches high from up here, but I'll go over the yellow a little bit. So, doing the side again here. I'm just blending, and if there's a spot I think should be lighter, I will add some white to my palette, and it's and I'll just kind of blend some over here where I think that don't over blend, you'll end up with a muddy color. But I want the darker, a little bit lighter yellow coming this way, and. I never know what's going to show through over here. So I will bring it down a bit. Not too, I don't have to go too far because the basket and the flowers has greenery behind it. So I'll just want to make sure I like the color graduation there. And that's it for the background. Now I'll let this brush rinse out. Put it in my basin and I am going to go for the next colors. Now on my original painting I can't remember what background colors I used so I'm just winging it. Um, it looks like there could be a tan or a brown a little umber in it. More white on my palette. So I'm going with the parchment, the white, and I do have a brown. Where's my brown? They seem to have misplaced it. Let's see, one moment. This one is Teddy Bear Brown in the multi-surface. And it's not open, so one moment. Instead, I went with the color called Real Brown. Now to do, I'm gonna tilt my palette, not my palette, but my canvas, that direction briefly. And I'm going to Go with my three quarter inch brush and I'm going to double load some white and the parchment in and I'm just going to drag my color every now and then add a little bit of brown. I'm going for a neutral, that was the word I was looking for earlier, a neutral tone down here. And I just, the yellow is still a bit wet so I can come to, back to that last. And I just want to get this paint on here as thick as possible, blending the two colors. And when I, I'm, I have the two colors on my palette, and I'm just kind of going into it and letting it blend as I go on. And every now and then I touch into that darker brown, which this color is real brown. And you can see how it's making some striations of color. I can go that way with the yellow. Still not dry enough to really get the coverage over the yellow, but it doesn't matter because I'll let it go ahead and let it dry in a little bit. And, and I'm just with the, I want to keep my strokes going back and forth because I want to give the illusion of it laying that direction. Instead of a slip slap motion. Okay. I will go around the edges off camera so I'm not shoving this thing up into your face. And I'll let this side over here dry a little more so I can get go over that yellow. And the basket comes down over this, so I don't have to worry about covering that yet. All right, I'll be back in a moment. I'm not sure if you can see them or not. The sun's trying to come in here on my window. I need to move a bit, but I have pencil marks. Here is the line where the table starts on my original painting that I'm painting from. And then here is where the basket is going to be. So I've kind of measured in and the table was 6.25 from the bottom inches. And then the basket was like 3.5 from the bottom. And the basket was 10 inches from the side. So that's how I'm getting my numbers or my layout for this. Now, when I first painted it, um, I just eyeballed it and or did the rule of thirds and 
all of that, trying to make it look right. I'm, I have to admit I'm terrible with composition and I'm just learning all of that stuff better. And for me, I, um, I do better just trial and error. So if you're skittish about doing this on a canvas or just practicing these, these ones from Michael's when you get them on sale or with a coupon, I mean, they break down to like a dollar and a half, a couple dollars each. So it's not a big deal for practicing. And if you hate it, you can go back over it and uh, do another painting on it. Sometimes because of the stroke method I use, there'll be ridges and what have you, but it just adds texture. And it's not a big deal, especially for practice. And to um, block it out, you could take a gesso, go over it, a, a painting you don't like, and then start over. So I'm, I have those same colors. I have the parchment, the wicker white on my palette. This is the three quarter inch flat Dewberry U Pro made by Weber. And I'm going to kind of make my dividing line for the tabletop. I'm just going to kind of drag it straight or as straight. I'm probably not that straight, but this isn't something I'm going for perfection. And remember I said I'd wait. I did dry it. I have a fan on the lower shelf of this work table I have. Um, if you want to build one, I actually have a, the instructions on how I built it on my website. And I love it. It's six feet long and it's countertop height and it's just perfect for working on. I've mixed a little bit of the brown in there and I'm going along and just blending the colors covering that yellow that I had come down for the background on. And I'm just kind of working in the different colors. I don't have to worry about going too far over here because the basket will cover that and that's a dark brown so it'll cover it easily. And again, don't overwork it. I have a tendency sometimes to overdo. You, sometimes, you just need to stop. Sometimes I just want to make sure that yellow is covered. And it looks like I got a little bump in it right there, but I'm not going to stress over it too much because I could do greenery over it or put a pansy right there or whatever I decide. Okay, now that's looking good. It's got good striations. And I will again let this dry so I don't mess it up while I'm doing the basket or while I'm getting ready to do the basket. So, okay, be back in a sec. I'm going to start on the basket, or at least the background of it. And I've got my real brown in the folk art. I'll probably have to put a lot more on here. Folk art, um, this is the multi-surface. Throw it on here while I'm doing this. And again, I have the flat three-quarter inch. It got up too high on the ferrule. But I was going to mention, too, when you're going to use brushes with acrylic, paint, you need to dampen them first so that the paint doesn't dry inside the bristle, bristles while you're painting because the acrylic dries pretty quickly. Now I'm going to just, here's my line for the bottom of my basket, I'm kind of going on those lines I drew. And then I want, oh, I'm just going to kind of round the bottom and I'm going to use the edge of my brush and I'll just fill in with the brown. The dark brown is going to be in the back, and I may go over this a couple of times to make it good and dark, or you can add a touch of black. I do have some black over here. No, I don't. It dried. Okay. But it's going to take a good amount of your brown. Work it out of your brush. And the top part will be covered by your pansies and stuff, so you don't have to get that real straight. Your pansies and your greenery will come over it. And don't overwork the paint because as you do that, it'll start lifting. Just get it on there as best you can. I'm going to do the side wrap here so it matches the painting. I need to get more of the dark brown on my palette. And just fill it in. Now 
Now you're going to go over this with the basket weaving so this does not have to be perfect. You just want it good and dark. So I will let that dry a bit and then I will come back and do another coat because it's not covering fully with the one coat or as full as I would like it. I could lay it on there a bit thicker but that will just take longer to dry. Okay, I just used up what I had on my palette and now I will let it dry so I can go over it with another coat. Now the base coat is dry. I didn't go over it with a second coat after all. That's completely optional. You could if you want this a little bit darker, but I looked at my um, original piece and I hadn't. So this will be dark enough. I am going to put the Real Brown. This is the Folk Art, Folk Art Multimedia, or Multi-Surface, not Media, and then Cinnamon for the um, other part of the webbing. And this one hasn't been opened, so it's to be a bear. So I'll just open it that way. Now I have, I'm using a 12, a number 12 flat brush. And it looks like my battery is dying. So hopefully this will record. I'll test it. Let me see. Number 12 flat brush. This is the Dewberry U Pro by Weber. And I'm going to double dip my brush or double load and blend it in there and to begin with I'm going to make just the lines here let me do this straighter and you can space them out wider apart I'm going to go back over this when I'm done they don't have to be perfectly even They just kind of give you a guideline. Now for the webbing on the basket, I'm double loading my brush. The lighter brown will be on the top. So let's zoom in here. Make it this in the camera better. And then I'm going to, on this one, I'm going to start with the flat edge, chisel edge against the side and twist. You see a twist and lift. And then since I started on the flat edge, but this time I'll start on the chisel edge. And I'll start this way. Chisel, I'm going over this line and coming back up to the chisel on this side. So it straddles that line. You may not be able to see it. I guess I need to put my palette over here so I'm not constantly getting my arm in your way. But I'm going to start on the chisel, drag, flatten, come back to the chisel as I twist the brush. I'm trying to keep the lighter brown on the top as the highlight. Flatten over that and come up. And if you don't feel like you're getting the lighter color um, on the top light enough, you can come back, you can add a little yellow or maybe I'll add this parchment color to my palette. And then you um, alternate between the uh, lines. I'll show you that right now. I'm going to add a little parchment, get a little bit lighter. So I'm going to start on my chisel edge and instead of stopping at this line this time, I'm going to go like that. You see how that one has the stops at that line and this one goes over it. And that's a little too much parchment, but I can come back later. And then I continue starting at the chisel on this one, flatten. And you see how my wider part kind of fills in where that, that one is. Now I'm being a little dramatic with this because it's showing you while well, I'm showing you I'm talking I'm not being as precise but this is all very forgiving so chisel edge flatten out come back to the chisel edge on that line now I have not done basket weaving so I'm not sure what those down pieces are called but so we'll call them the vertical part of the basket now again I'm going to start with my chisel edge there because this is the side of the basket and I'm only going to come to that line. Then I'm going to start with the chisel edge, flatten, come to the chisel edge again. 
Now I'm not sure if you're getting the motion of my brush. I'll do this slower. Chisel edge, flatten. I'm twisting the brush and bring it back up. And you can see how we're creating a weave in the basket. That one didn't come quite over. And so that one's ending there. And if some of these you don't like, you can go back over them. You can do it once it's dry, or you can do it now while it's wet. This one was much too light. And I'm getting a little too much paint from too much pressure on there. But I can come back in and... Now remember, this is going to fade into the background when you get the brighter colors on there, so we don't have to be too exacting on it. And uh, let me get this over here a little bit more. I did not see that you were not getting that the chisel edge. This one's going to go all the way over up to the chisel edge. Flatten, come up to the chisel edge. I, I ran out of paint on that one. Flat, chisel edge, up. Chisel edge, flatten up. And you see how the wide part kind of matches and fills in where that's narrower on that part. Okay, I'll finish this up since it's kind of boring watching me do all of those. And we'll see what we can do next. And this is going to uh, show you the basket weave motion. You can see how I have already started. And I have double loaded my brush with the real brown and cinnamon color in the Folk Art Multi-Surface. And I'm going to... This one was with, started with the flat edge against here and then moved up to a chisel. So this one's going to have the chisel move along. And as I get approach the line, I flatten out my brush. And I let it spring back up as I twist it upward, keeping the lighter color on the top. And then we'll start on the chisel edge, standing up, twisting, flattening, twisting still, and coming up. Now you're going to alternate between the lines, the vertical lines that were drawn on here. And we're going to create a weave type pattern by doing that. Now you noticed this one I'll start on the flat edge flat and then I just stop at that line where that one continued over it. And this one is going to start I'm going to flatten and come up to a point. Now if you feel like you're losing your highlight on top you can kind of add a little bit of the lighter color and kind of highlight some of it. You could add it to the color here if I wanted to. And I'm going to start on the chisel edge, flatten out, and come up to the chisel edge again. And you'll see how that makes that weave pattern. And after I'm done with all the weave pattern, I come back in and where I might have gone over the line on these ones that are going to be showing, I just touch in there. Now see I went over that weave there, but I just kind of fix that a little bit. And it makes it more distinct rather than having those little edges come over that line. <clears throat> and that is how you do your basket weave. So the basket has dried and um, now we're going to start on the foliage behind the pansies and some of it will come down onto the basket a little bit. I'm going to use a scruffy brush for this. I like the texture that it gives and the airiness um, to the tendrils that I'll bring down. I'm going to double load it. This is the citrus green in the Folk Art Multi-Service and this is the th other is the thicket. Just kind of pound it in there. Double load, pound it in there. And then I just pounce it on. And you don't have to fill it completely. It can have the yellow showing through and make sure you reload it with the same colors on the same area of the brush. And I kind of brought it down. I'm kind of looking at my piece. I'm sorry if that's noisy, but pouncing does get a little noisy. And I just fill it all in. And if you want to add a touch of highlights after a bit, you can 
bring in some a little bit of yellow on the brush or even white and if you want some darker you just pounce more on the darker side instead of straight up and down and you just fill it all in and decide where you want the um, I'm going to pounce the sides too while I'm thinking about it or I'll forget. Oops, I just hit my piece I was looking at, my finished piece. Okay, now to get the tendrils coming down here, I kind of go on the, I can go down dark green and then add a touch of the light green. And you don't want it too heavy. And I'm kind of running out of paint on my palette, but I'm not sure I'm going to need that much more. So I'll come down over the basket edge a little bit. And then you can add a little touch. You want it to come down thinner, thinner, thinner. And over on the edge here, I'll bring it down a bit. So that's how you kind of get the airy foliage. And you don't have to be exactly like this. You can do it your own specifications but and then step back and kind of look at it and I think that's good enough I don't want to overdo it and if you think there's an area that needs to be darkened darken it but you're gonna have a lot of pansies on top of that so and then you'll have some um, trailing leaves and stuff here so we'll let that dry and then we will come back and start on our pansies Sorry I got part of that off camera, but it's just me here and I don't always pay attention to what's showing on my little screen on my camera. Okay, before we start the pansies, this is still wet a little bit. Um, I'm going to put in some other foliage like um, vines and leaves. I've got the Thicket and the Citrus Green in the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint on my palette. And I'm just double loading my number 12 brush. And it worked in there and then I'm going to have these tendrils coming out. I'm just adding some leaves along the way. Just the basic little stroke leaves and I'm just kind of looking at my other piece. I go back and reload whenever I feel like it's getting too dry. And if I don't like the tip, I just go back and work it again. And I have one more piece that comes out. I may have these coming a little lower and longer than my original, but each one will always be different. And let's see. I have some coming down from here. It's the same, you do the one stroke slider leaf or whatever it's called. Let's see. And if you want to drag the little vein into it. You just come along, make sure your edge is staying, keeping a chisel, and you pull that in. And I have another one coming right here. It looks like I have another one coming here, but it goes over top of one of the pansies. So I will wait for that one. And I don't know if this will show. Well, that one looks like it's, there's one up here, but it looks like it's put in right before a pansy, since I know that pansy is going to be there. I have a pansy here, pansy up here. So let's see if we can 
make it visible it's dragging because that paint's still really wet and this is a very heavy bodied paint so it kind of really yeah for it to really show well I might need to add more dark or wait till the underneath or we can leave it like it is so it's just kind of an indication of some leaves let me add more dark to this next one so it looks like there's another one up here oh see it drugs so I'm not keeping my chisel edge which to fix that I could go in with another scruffy load up my paint and kind of pounce that out One thing that's nice to do is learn how to fix your mistakes. I've made plenty. And there, that just kind of indicates the leaves are there. Now if I wanted to be, stand out more, I would wait till the background dried and do it again. But there I have some of the background leaves and vines. Now I will let that dry and then we'll come back and do the pansies. Now I'm going to put on some of the blue pansies and they may not exactly do it like my um, first piece. I'm double loading my Dewberry U flat three quarter inch brush and the colors I have on here are Americana Prussian Blue and the Folk Art Multi-Surface Look At Me Blue. And it looked like they were far enough apart as far as darkness or lightness, whichever one contrasting shades of blue, to uh, do very well. I'm going to start, I'm going to place this pansy right about here. I'm going to start with the back petals and I'm going to do two scallop strokes. One is going to overlap the other. This is just like on my pansy painting tutorials, which I have um, on my blog. I have one or two that have step-by-step -step photographs. If you wanted to look at those, you could. Now the back petal there is, there's some green showing through, but I'm going to have a purple pansy kind of overlapping it, so I'm not going to worry. About that too much and that one it doesn't seem to be too bad but if you if it bothered you and you wanted a more opaque then you could let these dry and then come back and go over them but I'm not going to I'm going to go right here and I'm going to do now this one the light was on the outside the dark on the inside this petal I'm going to do the dark on the outside I'm doing the scallop stroke it's gotten a little gloppy in the middle if you need to you go back to your palette reload and when the inside color, which is light on this stroke, um, you don't need as much of the blue because the dark blue is spreading out and the light blue is staying in and you're using less of it. So it can glop if you have too much on there um, for this stroke. So I kind of load it and then dab it off. And then hopefully there's not as much in there. I still have a feeling I have a lot in here so it's still going to glop, but I can fix that. Okay, now I'm going to start this scallop stroke this way. And you notice how then you have the dark on the outside and the contrast with that. Now I'm going to do the bottom stroke. Now sometimes I will wait and we'll see how this goes and do um, till that dries because the light will want to pick up the dark and sometimes it can make it that work and you see you have the, a big long scallop stroke and I pull up and there's a lot of green showing up so I will let that dry and I will go over that um, to make it more opaque. Now I'm going to reload and I'm going to figure out where I'm going to have another one, another blue one and here is, let me pull it down here, hopefully the camera will focus for you. So you have here's the one dark one I just did blue and then there's another one up there. I could switch it around if I chose to and there's a, a purple one here, 
so I could do another purple one up there or I could just stick with how this went. Okay, so I'm going to do another blue one right about there. And I could kind of, tr see this one is facing straight forward and I can kind of turn it where it is going the other direction. And I'll make this one the dark be the background, the back petals I should say. I gotta grab my palette, it wants to move on me. And then, okay, I wanted it to face kind of that way, so. Now I will do the side petals. And I need to go over that one because I didn't get the dark going well in the center. There, now you see it. Now these ones do look like they need a little going over, so I'll let those dry before I come and do the um, the bottom stroke. So there is one also sitting right here, which I can do. So while that's drying, I'll go and start the next one, and there is one sitting down here as well, which I can do that too. So when I did the original, I just kind of figured out where I wanted my my flowers and what have you. Now this one, I may have it too close to this one for that purple, but the purple will probably just sit a little higher than in the original, and, but it'll cover more of this one than it does in the original. So it's just, it, I could never do two exactly the same. And I may want, you know, the purple to be setting up a little bit higher on this one. So you just eyeball it. Um, I just know that e odd numbers in these things um, work better or is visually more appealing. So you always try to make odd numbers. Like I'll make seven pansies in the basket, not six. Or I would do five if I was only gonna do five. And then I'll do the two down here. So for a total of nine pansies in the whole painting. Okay. Let's go to the next one, this one. Let's have it come up here a little bit. And I'll turn my brush. Now oh, that one I didn't like the way it did the inside. So I'm not liking the shape of that one, so I can totally come back and redo it. I'll redo that back petal. And then I'll come back. And I'm not liking, you see how the yellow is really coming through on there. So I am going to let that dry a little bit and then I'll go over it to make it more opaque. And it looks like I have, let me see, a big one here and then this one can sit up here. So, I'll move that up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes I do remember to check the camera and see where your view is at. Okay, let's see. I want to make those opaque more too, so I will hold off. I'm going to try this other brush. I was telling you I was testing out a new brand of brush, and now I can't find it. Oh, there it is. So this is that Craft Smart three-quarter inch brush from Michaels that I was going to try. And it seems to be a bit softer, which is fine, because the ones I started originally painting with were softer. And... Um, and I like the way it performs. Let me get some more paint on my palette. Not too much because I only have um, parts to do of a few pansies. Also, maybe I'll try this other dark blue. It's not quite as dark as the Prussian. 
So we'll see. And if I don't like the contrast, if it doesn't have enough contrast for my taste, then I'll put more pressure on. Okay. We want it filled probably about two thirds of the way up. Not too gloppy in it. Okay, and let's see. Hmm, these aren't dry enough to go over. One, two, three, four. Eh, we'll try it. We'll see how it performs. And it seems to have enough spring. Works pretty good. Now I will do the bottom stroke. I'm not in the way, am I? Let me move that over there. Gotta remember to keep you in the camera. Okay. And that did really well. Now I have too much dark on that one, so I can fix that in a minute. Um, the way this performed very well is with the less spring, it didn't pull the paint up and it made it opaque the first time around. So I'm actually liking this brush. It performs a lot like my older plaid one stroke Donna Dewberry brushes. These are a little bit softer than the Weber one stroke and it seems to be working on the canvas very well. So one up for this brush, which uh, I think you can only get them in Michaels. I don't know if it's their brand. And a lot of times paint brush companies or companies will uh, private label for um, different um, stores and what have you. So it's the same as maybe a pricier brush, but it is the store brand. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over these. And then I do the dark part. Hopefully I don't have it too gloppy. Now sometimes if you have a big ridge that adds texture to your painting and is not necessarily a bad thing. If it bothers you, go in and fix it. But for me, I like the texture. It kind of reminds me of Impasto painting, and yeah, that has a lot of texture. And now that I'm comparing, I'm not liking how this isn't opaque. So even though that brush, that other petal is over top of it, I can fix it without um, messing it up. I just go over it, and I, for this, I want the darker blue. So I'm putting some more of the darker blue back on my palette. And now I'm putting it in my brush. I was wondering why I didn't remember that not covering well, because it did before. So it had to do with my brush. And so the softer brush is working better on this painting than the stiffer brush. So this there's going to be a center part um, here, some detailing put in. So... I'm not real concerned with it not being perfect. So this one is kind of a funky looking one, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it off. And it will have, well, in my original, the lavender was sitting underneath both these blues. So I can come back and go over that once I get the lavender one put in if I desire. So let me see, get some more finish this lower petal, or lower flower, down here. And I wasn't liking how it was not opaque, so I waited. And now I'm just going to go back over it and just redo it. A little gloppy in the middle, so I'm pulling it out. And the dark will be towards the outside, so that means I need to have less of the lighter blue. So I'm pulling some of it out. I'm standing at an odd angle for me because I'm trying to keep everything in the camera, so it's a little sloppier 
but sometimes sloppier is called artistic. So just work with it. Alrighty, so um, the last blue one is goes over top of this purple one. So I will wait. I could do the top part up there and then wait to do the bottom part when I have the purple one added in. So I can do that. Do the top part of this blue. It kind of overlaps that one. So I need to get it up here. Keep loading. I'm almost out of the light blue, but I don't want to get too much on here because I'm not just about finished with this flower for now. Mm -mm. This one, I guess I can go this way. Okay, so the bottom petal will come over the, over the purple one. So I'm going to let those dry because the purple will drag in the blue and I don't really want to mix the colors. Now I did have some little strokes on the bottom, just like petals that had fallen, and they're just basically little nothing too, just like as petals had fallen down to the ground or the tabletop, and it just adds some texture, some interest. Okay. We will stick with that right there, and I can come and start doing the lavender flowers up there while the blue is drying. As long as I can keep my arm out of the blue, we'll work just fine. Okay, I will get my brush cleaned out and change brushes. I'm going to use the same lavender that I'm going to use in the pansies, because I want it um, to minimize how many colors I use. So. I will use, this is the Craft Smart. it's in the same package as that three quarter inch brush that I ended up liking using and this is the number 12 that's in that brush and all I'm going to do is make little strokes like this as if it's kind of like a lupin flower. That's like not exactly how lupin looks but I'm just mimicking a flower. And I keep loading as I run out of a little bit of paint on my brush. The yellow's coming through. It's not completely opaque. This one I'll have the tip be We'll see what I think of that. Oh, I think that works. I'm not don't want to overdo it. Now on um, my original piece, I came back with a touch of white on the tip, and I may do that. I may not. Let's see what I think. And then we see had some up here. Well, that lavender pansy is going to be way up here, so we may. cover a lot of that but it's not a big deal and I don't want any of that down here. I'm going to have like one probably petal, maybe two of the falling pansy petals and I think that's that for that part. Really easy, just chisel edge and just drag, press, lift, press, lift, press, lift and it just makes those little spiky flowers. Oh, rats, am I out of it? Um, sorry, I'll do that again. Hopefully I can figure out how to cut that part out. To do the flower, I'm just setting on the chisel edge, press, lift, press, lift, press, lift. And I'm meeting it up against the stem there. Press, lift, press, lift, press, lift. Press, lift. And there you have your strokey flowers. Now we're going to work on the purple pansies. I have the two colors, well actually three colors on my palette. This one is, oh my goodness, um, eggplant. It's the plaid multi-surface. 
And then this also is Lavender Multi-Surface by Plaid. And I also have a touch of the Dioxanine Purple, which you can't get this anymore. Um, you have to mix it up yourself. Um, but we all really love it, don't know why Plaid discontinued it. But it's um, an even mix of Night Sky and Alizarin Crimson with the teeniest, tiniest touch of black. And you can make that color yourself. I have included it on my palette here because it will give me a really good dark uh, outline or, or a contrast color for the lavender. A little, just gives a little more depth than the eggplant does. And I really like that. Okay, I've loaded my three quarter inch brush and I have moved to my Royal Majestic three quarter inch. I was, I hadn't tried this in a package I had got. And since uh, the others reacted very differently than the smaller size brushes and brands, I wanted to give this one a try and uh, see how it works for me. Okay, here's where the, nope, that's right. I wasn't gonna do that. I'm gonna go over here for my lavender or and purple pansy. And that one's kind of point straight. Maybe I want this pansy kind of leaning this way. So I'm going to do the back petals. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit for you on this one. Hopefully I will remember. Let me get it in there to uh, zoom it back out if I move. And then Now there's the back petals and some of it is lifted and you can see through. So I'm going to let those dry before I move on and I'm going to go over, <clears throat> excuse me, this one a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and move up to this one and do the back petals for it. Um, I'm going to, this one is kind of pointing that way. This one's pointing straight forward. Yeah, I might make this one painting pretty straightforward too. I'm going to start with the dark on the outer edge this time. Trying not to get it too gloppy in my brush. And I will start right here. And that's getting good coverage there. And that's looking pretty good. I can go on and do this stroke out here. And that will be the light on the outside. You notice I'm just doing a large scallop stroke. And when I pulled up, it kind of pulled some of the paint up. So I can dab some in there or I can wait and fix it doing that again doing it over a second coat there. Now this blue might still be a little bit wet, but I'm going to go ahead and do it and see. Yeah, it pulled the blue into it, so I'll have to do a second coat on that. So then there's going to be one here, but it goes over top of that one. So let's see if that one is dry enough to go ahead and paint over it. Do a second coat. I don't need to do both, just the one. And that worked just fine. So I can continue on. Oops, I just dipped my brush in the wrong color. I'm just going to wipe it off on my rag over here. Sometimes if I'm not watching what I'm doing, I will do that. I'll dip the light side into the darker paint. Okay, so this one's going to be dark. So I'm going to do the big scallop stroke there. And I'm just, since I still got plenty of paint on that side, I'm just going to flip it over. Start my scallop stroke. And pull it in. Now I have a harder time going backwards than I do the other direction. So that's sometimes why the paint gets lifted because my stroke isn't quite as smooth as it could be. Now my, because I'm not really sitting in a good position where I'm centered over it, I'm, my pansies are looking a little awkward instead of being more round. But um, 
they're still fine. It'll work just fine. I guess I can go ahead and do the back pedals for this one here. And I will I made my original. Nope, I thought maybe this blue went over that one, but it doesn't, so I'm all is good. Yes. Now, really, to have good contrast, I should have had this be dark on the back on the outside and then light on the outside edges of those, so it would contrast it well with that. But that's okay, I'll come in and, um, not highlight, but I'll shadow around that, and it should work just fine. Okay, now I'm gonna do the lower big scallop for this one. And I will do the same on this one. Now you can see I kind of got the dark purple gloppy. That's because it's such a compact area and I had too much paint on that side of the brush, which I should have dabbed it off on my palette before going around. But I'm going to have some detailing put in there, so that's not a big deal. And sometimes when I try to fix it, I just make a bigger mess, but that's okay. We're all okay. Now, as soon as that back petals are dry, I can put the final petals for the blue one in. I have one down there. Let me go back out and move my painting so that that, oh, let me go back in. I'm trying to get you the best view here. Hopefully that brought it into focus. The little screen on my camera, I can't always see that good. Okay, so this pansy down here, I might put it a little lower and I had two light backs, so I'll do a dark back, back petals. So here we go. Now I'd better go this way. I'm trying not to load as much on the dark one. It's going to be in the center. on there, it's going to get gloppy. And there we have another purple pansy. And I'm not sure if that's dry enough up there. I may have to take it to the blow dryer and dry that off so that I don't have more too much blue into that pansy. Try not to look at my other piece and find out what is wrong with these. These lined up too much. That's a problem there. I should have had this one staggered a little bit lower. I'm more focused on videoing for you than I am for, um, designing or looking at the composition. So just keep in mind, you don't want lined up like that. And even these are kind of too lined up. They should have been staggered more, but you can play with that on your own painting and figure out, and it might help you to kind of chalk them in, and then you can kind of place them with chalk, and then you can kind of get an idea what it's looking like before you commit to paint like I did on this one. I already hit, went ahead and went over those with another coat, so it has the second coat on, and I've switched to one of my older brushes that I've all used, I'm the most used to using for a three quarter inch, and that's the Plaid One Stroke Donna Dewberry Flat. And I was just giving it a test. I'm just using these to compare between the brushes so I can give you the best advice as to which one works the best for this. And now we're going to go to do the dark coat. I'm running out of paint on my palette, but I think I have enough to finish this. And there, 
There we go. And we finished up that one. Now I can come in. Yeah, it looks like it's dry enough to do the blue over top of that. So I will look at all my other pansies, look if I'm okay with them. This one I think I might need to do over. I don't like the way I tried to correct it there. And then I will get some blue on my palette to finish that pansy. Okay, I'm going to do the bait bottom petal for that blue one, and it would be the dark would be on the outside edge. And I'm just going to come down and around and do that stroke. I'm going to have to turn this so that I can get this edge here better than I've got it now and that works better. Sometimes you have to flip your work around to get the effect you want. And try not to overcorrect. I will admit that's a big error of mine. And then I have to go all the way over it again. Okay. Now there is that. Let's see. Anything else needing correcting while I have the blue paint on my palette? I don't think so. Okay, now I will get the detail stuff out, colors, and my detail brush, and we will do the centers for you. Now we're going to start on some of the detail or the centers for the pansies. I have again the daffodil yellow in the folk art multi surface, and I just I'm just going to work out of the lid. That way I don't have to put any out onto my palette it's not really necessary I have this one is a number two script liner you don't have to do it with a script liner you can do it with the corner of uh, your number 12 brush even the point of a pencil um, you can dip it in there and just all you're gonna do is get some yellow in the centers of your pansies and you just dab it in there. It doesn't have to be perfectly circular, but it sort of circular is fine. And I'm just dabbing it in there. And I'll dab the lower two, but that's it for the yellow centers. And I'll come back and uh, show you the. Well, let me see. I guess I could go ahead and do. Well, just a moment. I get ahead of myself. I'm going to dab the two lower ones. You don't have to see that since it's basically the same thing. There. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm going to get my white. And I'm going to put the little upside down V on them. Now I will, I'm just dipping right out of the lid, but then I'm dragging my script liner like this. You want to make it a teeny tiny point. Now if it, sometimes for me it works better to have a smaller script liner, but I think if I could do a real light touch, I'm just making the upside down V on the tops of the centers. I do tend to get a little heavy handed. That's why I, a lot of times I use a smaller script liner, maybe a number one or a zero. And you see this one, the bottom is like that. So I try to follow along with where the bottom petal is. See, I got that too gloppy on my brush. And you may pick up a little bit of the yellow, but it's not a big deal. And I'm getting a little too thick, so I need to add a little water to my brush and make it a little thinner. Number one, because this is a bigger brush than I need to use because I just have too much pressure going on on my brush. So there is the upside down V over top of the yellow center. Now I am going to switch to a smaller. This is a number one script liner and that's what I'm going to use to do the black 
I guess you could call it mustache or the little veins underneath or beard. I don't know. What do they call these on pansies? Let me scoop in here as best I can. I have black on my palette. I'm going to, my brush was wet and I'm going to, you want this kind of an inky consistency and I'm pulling and twisting my brush to a point. You want a pointy point. And then I'm just going to go along and make these little whiskers on into the bottom petal like you would see on pansies. I'm not sure you can see that, but it's just tiny, tiny hair like whiskers. And sometimes I will bring them out into the side petals and sometimes I don't. And I go along to all my pansies and I pull some whiskers on them. That purple's still pretty wet in that one. So I'll have to come back and do more whiskers over top when it when it dries because the purple isn't letting the whiskers show up. So I do that on each and every pansy, some whiskers. And that's the detailing on that. On some of them, and I don't know if I did it on my other one, I did do it. But after it's all dried, I'll come in and you're right at the tip inside of the V, I'll put a little white dot. Or not white, I mean red. Red dot. And so now I think we will go and do the final leaves on down here and that trail over top of those pansies. So I will get my paint out, my greens, and come back and I will do that for you. So here we go. We're going to do the final leaves. Now there was, I didn't finish doing all the detail work on that. It wasn't necessary for you, but here I had kind of a, just a scallop leaf. Just a real simple one. Make sure your tip matches. And then there was a vine is a vine with some slider leaves. So we'll just come out here. I don't know if you really are familiar with the slider leaves, but basically I have my stem. I place my brush kind of at an angle. I don't do it flat and then twist. Kind of an angle and I'm pushing and then let it come back to the chisel edge. Push it down, let it come back to the chisel edge. So that is the easy slider leaf and you can change it. You can wiggle your brush a little bit to get a different look. And it looks like I have a bit of a leaf down here. Well, I'm not keeping a good chisel edge with that. Could be the brush, it could be me, but that should be uh, vein, not a big gash there, but I'm not going to worry about it again. Maybe I'll try a different brush for my next one. Okay. I'm loading it up with my green paint and there's this one that comes down and it comes onto that pansy. And just on the chisel edge, kind of leaning the brush back is how I do the veining. And that prevents it many times from getting too thick. Though I have a tendency, as I've said before, to get too heavy handed. I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. And this kind of has a... See, that one didn't end well. So I do that. I come and fix it. And again, I'm getting the veins too fat. A lot of times, too, if you have a tendency like I do to get 
the um, tendrils too thick, do it with a liner brush, like that number one liner, instead of the edge of your number 12 or your flat brush. And I, I'm looking at my original piece right now, and I had scruffed in some of the green there, but you don't have to. Maybe I could just add another leaf here instead. It's totally up to you. And then I think that is pretty much it for that part. I think I have all the leaves put in. I'm looking around at it. Now I will come back in a second. I'll go out and reload my palette and I'll show you how I shadowed a lot of them to give them an added dimension. Uh, on this one, I am going to use for my clear medium for floating. I'm using the Folk Art Floating Medium. And because this one has blues in it, I'm going to use the Payne's Gray, Folk Art Payne's Gray, as my shadow color. A lot of times I use Burnt Umber, um, Asphaltum, and it's just, this stuff is so thick it's not coming out. Okay, I'm going to have to dig it out. This is actually, Payne's Gray is an artist pigment, which means it's very thick. And... Um, and hard to get to squeeze out. I've had this one a long time too, so I need to clean my brush again. And I'm going to make sure I don't load my brush completely with the medium, work it in there, and then just dip my corner of my brush into the Payne's Gray and work it so that it kind of graduates out. And then I'm just gonna go around things, like here's my basket. I'm going underneath the basket, along the edge, and I'm just creating a shadow. Now on my original, I noticed I had taken a dark, the darker color in here and kind of went down, so it gave the basket more of a shadow underneath it, a little darker color, and I failed to do that here. But basically all I did was when I was painting this, or maybe right after I painted it, I went along with maybe some of the brown down underneath the basket, making it just a little bit darker color underneath there. But this shadowing should work. Okay, just fine. And just now this leaf is still a little wet, so I need to avoid that. And you'll go around the leaves too. Now I'm exaggerating it a little bit. It's a little darker in some areas than I would have. And you can work that out by putting a little more in your brush and then working along there. See, it kind of pulls it up. New shadow underneath the fallen petals. A bit. This leaf still had, is wet, so I'm going to be very careful. And I picked up the green anyways. And I can work that off with more of the, more of the floating medium into the brush without adding any of the color. And I will continue. I'd go along all underneath my pansies and around them and sometimes like when you're on top of a darker color you want to make it a little darker and that one's still wet so I'd have to be careful around there and underneath this pansy since it's going over top I would also shadow underneath it and I need to get some more of the paints gray out I didn't get enough onto my palette. And so I'm basically just going around everything and creating a bit of a shadow that so it gives it some depth. I'm not getting my palette in your way, sorry. along the outside of this pansy on top of the blue pansy. And that makes that blue pansy 
rather recede. And then along this pansy. And it gives you that dimension. And I would do that around this one, around this one, down underneath this one. And underneath the leaves, there's a need to dry yet. And basically that gives you the added, like I said, dimension. And I would do it along here. And it's already doing good underneath there. And that is basically your pansy in a basket painting. Let's see, I'm gonna bring in the other one. Okay, here's the copy, and this is my original, and I, I don't know if you can notice how it's a little bit darker right underneath here with the browns than, it, than my other. See, this one is, it doesn't have the darkness right there. And that's it. I should, I will photograph them side by side for the website, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this and please share if you make one for yourself.